Hi, I'm Chari, Chari Hineti Elon. I've been asked to give a lecture on how to communicate effectively at work for the students of Carlos Hilado Memorial State College. And I'd like to thank Mr. Roderick Samonte for giving me this opportunity to talk to you today. I was told this lecture series is for BS industrial tech students who will have their internship next year. Good luck to you guys. You've probably heard the saying, you can have brilliant ideas, but if you can't get them across, your ideas won't get to you anywhere. So it's important to know how to relay your message in the workplace or for that matter, wherever you are. If you can't communicate clearly, it doesn't matter what your vision, mission, or direction is. You've got to connect with people and communicate effectively. Come to think of it, who doesn't want to communicate effectively? Knowing that communicating effectively is for everyone to learn and master, I'm sharing this lecture with everyone who's interested to reap the fruits of communicating effectively at work. In communicating, shall we say, is it only through words or actions or both? Is it just verbal or nonverbal communication? Which one is more important at work? How do you communicate well in the first place? Is there a hard and fast rule of communicating effectively? I bet these questions are running through your thoughts right now. Or you can even say, I'm already good at communicating. I communicate well enough. I should be fine. Hmm. Are you sure about that? To fully appreciate the value of communicating effectively at work, allow me to begin with why. Why do you need to communicate effectively in the first place? Not only at work, but even in our personal dealings. Just let me put it this way. Communicating effectively would bring you astounding success, not only in the workplace, but in your personal life as well. Good communication plays an essential role on how you advance in life. But you must understand that communicating is not just about talking or writing. It's also about listening. Let me put this this way. The true meaning of communicating is to understand and be understood. Being able to communicate effectively is perhaps the most important of all life skills. It is what enables us to pass information to other people and to understand what is said to us, which is very important at living. So why is it important? Perhaps you know are hundreds of reasons, but I'll give you the top two. First, it is important because it builds trust. Effective communication fosters trust with others. Your ability to listen attentively and embrace different points of view gives you more wisdom and helps you grow. Also, your ability to convey your thoughts and your ideas fluently and effectively portrays you as a capable individual. It will make your peers, your colleagues, and even your boss trust you. If you can communicate effectively, you can definitely do more. Conversely, if you cannot communicate effectively, and if you can't be trusted to communicate well enough, how else will you be trusted with other responsibilities? Second, effective communication improves relationships, both with your colleagues at work and family members and friends and acquaintances in your personal life. Listening carefully and offering quality feedback helps people to feel heard and understood. This, in turn, nurtures mutual respect. Communicating comprises listening, ensuring others get your point, and persuading them to take action on what you're saying. But of course, you've got to listen too when others share their ideas. In his book, The Power of Effective Communication, Brian Tracy outlined some of the benefits you'll enjoy when you have developed your power to communicate effectively. Let me share them with you. You will feel comfortable and confident whenever you're put on the spot. Whether you're going to talk to present, to answer a question, whether it's around the water cooler, in a meeting, or on a stage, wherever you are, you'd be comfortable. You can easily make a successful, lasting, and positive impression whenever you speak to someone, whether your goal is to educate, entertain, persuade, or inspire. You would earn more respect from the people around you, from your boss to your friends. And listen to this one. You will find it easier than ever to get what you want. That is true. You will find it easier than ever to get what you want if you can relay your ideas. 
You can also get the recognition you deserve and climb the corporate ladder more quickly and efficiently. When you have developed the power to communicate effectively, you can develop stronger relationships that would buoy you to the top as you pursue your goals. You can increase your efficiency, earn more money in less time, and have more freedom to do the things you love. You would also influence the people you talk to, whether you want them to take action or adapt to your way of thinking. Isn't it just awesome? Now that we have established why it's important to communicate effectively, remember that effective communication involves knowing how to listen attentively. It is the ability to offer empathy, open-mindedness, and helpful feedback based on what you hear. You don't need to give advice when someone tells you their problem or sometimes asks you something. You just listen and make sure that you've got it. And as a friendly demeanor, confidence, nonverbal quality communication is important in any role that you play in an organization. We will get to this one as we move along in this lecture. Professionally, if you are applying for jobs or looking for a permanent work after internship, you need to demonstrate good communication skills not just a time when you would present, but all the time. Hence, when you talk to someone, maintain eye contact. It would be rude not to look at someone whom you're talking to. When you maintain eye contact, it would show that you know what you're talking about and that you're listening to the person you're talking to, plus that you are interested in what they're talking about. When you speak or write, demonstrate a varied vocabulary and tailor your language to your audience, Present your ideas appropriately, write clearly and concisely. I always say this, say what you mean, mean what you say. Be sincere. In your communication, both in verbal and nonverbal, make sure you are sincere. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that would stop you from being sincere because it is the most important thing that you do when you communicate because people will see you through you and they would appreciate the real you for being respectful, kind, and open-minded. It also helps to remember this. If you can't say anything nice, say nothing at all. But of course, don't let this stop you from expressing yourself. You may express yourself, but in a respectful manner. Good verbal communication means saying just enough. Don't talk too much or too little. Try to convey your message in as few words as possible. Say what you want clearly and directly, whether you're speaking to someone in person, on the phone, or via email. If you ramble on, your listener will either tune you out or will be unsure of exactly what you want. Think about what you want to say before you say it. This will help you to avoid talking excessively or confusing your audience. As your career progresses, the importance of communication skills also increases. The ability to speak Listen, question, and write with clarity and conciseness are essential to the growth of your career. So, also, pay attention to non-verbal signs. When we communicate with each other, we rarely use only words. Most of the time, we are using our body language, which includes gestures, facial expressions, voice tones, eye contact, posture, and even breathing to send our message. That's why we must learn to spot all these nonverbal signs and properly use them in order to send our message as accurately as possible. Learning to read and use body language will help you connect and establish relationships with others more easily because everyone wants to communicate with a person who truly listens, cares, and understands. At work, control your emotions. Far too often, when we touch on a sensitive subject, we allow our emotions to lead us in a conversation. Sometimes, we then forget the whole point of that conversation, leading to an unpleasant situation where we say things that we later regret, or sometimes we interrupt the person who's still talking. Strong feelings like love and stress and sometimes exhaustion, sleeplessness can easily cloud our minds during conversations and make us no longer think rationally. In these situations, Emotional management techniques can help us return to a relaxed and rational state and enable us to engage with others without losing our control. Remember that the words we choose to speak can have a great impact on our message and can determine how effectively it is passed on to others. 
For instance, if you're a team leader and want to let your team know that you're in this together, you want to have the cooperation of everyone, use pronouns like us and we while speaking. This way, they will start to think of themselves more like a part of the team and less like an individual part of a, co of a company. In short, words can have a lot of power if you know how and when to speak them. Display confidence and seriousness. Ensure that you display confidence and seriousness at work so that you will not be taken for granted. When you appear insecure and doubtful with your words and gestures, you will not be taken seriously. And if there is a window for promotion or regular work in reality, those who appear confident are always on top of mind of management. So display confidence, not arrogance, but confidence. It is important to be confident in your interactions with others. Confidence shows that your co-workers, that you believe in what you're saying and you will follow through. Exuding confidence can be as simple as making an eye contact or using a firm but friendly tone. Avoid making statements sound like questions. Of course, be careful not to sound arrogant or aggressive. Be sure you are always listening and empathizing with others. Use simple words. The truth is that everybody cannot be on the same page when it comes to vocabulary. Therefore, to be effective in your communication, use words that can be easily understood. When ambiguous words or highfalutin words are used, you can be misunderstood and you will waste your precious time having to explain yourself. And that is not good, right? Use the appropriate tone of voice. One word can mean a different thing when said in a different tone of voice. Make sure you use the appropriate tone of voice to communicate your message so that you won't be misunderstood. The simple way of saying thank you can be said in many different ways. Thank you or thank you. There you go. Be articulate. Being articulate when you communicate makes it easier for them to understand your message. Meaning, don't mumble. Pronounce words clearly. And don't rush when you speak. Take your time and think before you speak. When you know what you want to say, say it well. Repeat it if necessary. Again, when you know what you want to say, say it well. But again, communication isn't all about words. It's your words, your actions, your whole being. These comprise a communication that makes our entire being speak what's in our hearts and minds. But it would also help to remind ourselves that there's a time for everything. A time to speak up, a time to shut up. Know when to do either or both when you're at work. Example, using phrases as simple as, I understand where you're coming from. Demonstrate that you have been listening to the other person and respect their opinions. Active listening can help you tune in to your conversational partner and you would understand what he or she is thinking and feeling, which will in turn make it easier to display empathy which is very important in effective communication. Even when you disagree with your colleague or with your boss, it is important to un understand and respect their point of view. When you want to advance in your career, you must work hard at these communication tactics. In written communication, remember that email is still the most potent way to communicate at work. When you want to request for something, when you need to explain yourself or ask a question or just report. When someone emails you, reply as soon as you can, immediately at will. But if you're working on something more urgent, at least reply to the email that was sent to you before the end of the day. Use respectful, professional language all the time. Be direct and succinct. But what's funny nowadays is that some people are so accustomed to shortcuts sending misspelled words in texts or Facebook messages and WhatsApp messages, but that is fine because that is informal, but that is not acceptable at work. It speaks of how you give importance to your work. So in emails, be professional. No ifs, no buts. Remember, written communication can be filed and compiled and you cannot take it back. Once it's sent, it's there forever. So be careful with your written communication. A good reference for further developing your communication skills is Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I always refer to this book, and this has been my reference since many, many years ago. 
Techniques in Handling People. This is what I'm going to share with you from Dale Carnegie. Don't criticize, condemn, or complain in public. When you need to do that, do it in private. But give honest and sincere appreciation in public. Arouse the peer person or want in a person. Become genuinely interested in other people. Smile. Through a friendly tone, a personal question, or simply a smile, you will encourage your co-workers to engage in open and honest communication with you. It is important to be polite in all your workplace communications. This is important in both face-to-face -face and written communication. When you can, personalize your emails to co-workers. Like after a weekend, you could say, hi, I hope you all had a good weekend at the start of your email, personalize a message and make the recipient feel more appreciated. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. People will be more open to communicating with you if you convey respect for them and their ideas. Simple actions like using a person's name, making eye contact, and active listening when a person speaks to you will make the person feel appreciated. I could not stress this enough. On the phone, avoid distractions and stay focused on the conversation. Convey respect through email by taking time to edit your message. If you send a sloppily written, confusing email, misspelled words, the recipient will think that you do not respect her enough to think through your communication with her. So always remember that. Be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. Talk in terms of the other person's interests. And of course, it is also important to make the other person feel important. But do it sincerely. Don't flatter. Don't just say things that you don't mean. Remember, say what you mean, mean what you say. The only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. So win people to your way of thinking, but don't push it too hard. Show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say, you're wrong. No, but if you are wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. Try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. Be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires. It is important to do that so that they will not just understand you, but appreciate you as well. When dealing with people, let us remember, we are not dealing with creatures of pure logic. That is what we want, but that is not the reality. Reality versus expectation or expectation versus reality. We are dealing with creatures of emotion, creatures bristling with biases and motivated by pride and vanity. That would help you how to deal with your colleagues, if you remember that. Finally, the key takeaways that I'd like to share with you are the five C's of effective communication. This is based on Cheryl Key's article in Forbes Coaches. I like these since it's most relatable and applicable. You can make yourself a checklist when you practice communicating. Number one, be clear. To communicate effectively, you have to know what you want and take ownership for your own needs. Before communicating your ideas, identify it and know what you want and need from the other person. When you experience an issue, try to get clarity on what the issue is and why it shows up for you. Do you feel disrespected and shut down when a colleague is not open to hearing your opinion in a meeting? Understand what value of yours isn't being honored and own it. It's your responsibility to initiate the tough conversation. But remember, always do it with respect. Communicate the issue directly without misinterpreting or reacting emotionally, judgmentally or defensively. Take ownership of your experience and be transparent. Be as clear and objective as possible. Number two, be concise. Keep your requests direct, simple, and to the point. The less words, the better. Don't get caught up in the story. Focus on getting your point across in the most succinct manner and move the conversation forward. Number three, provide a compelling request. Once you make a request for change, you're in negotiations. After communicating the issue, provide a person with a suggested solution that you'd be happy if you feel, shall I say, if you feel that you were able to get your idea across. But if you feel shut down and dismissed in meetings, whenever you bring your idea of expertise into consideration, first ask the person if there's a deeper issue, then ask how you might resolve it. 
and make your request to be listened to in the future. Explain that it's just as important for you to express your opinion or expertise, be involved in the conversation, and share your thoughts on the topic to provide necessary feedback. So, compelling request. Be curious. That's number four. Be curious. Listen to what the other person needs. Once you make a request, be curious about the other person's issues and objectives and what they might need to fulfill your request. It's not all about you. Remember, this is a two-way process. Understand where the other person is coming from because they also have needs and issues that need to be addressed. Number five, be compassionate. Make an attempt to understand the other person. Listen carefully to their feedback and put your assumptions aside. When a person feels like they're being heard, they tend to open up more and feel safer and more secure in the conversation, which can lead to a more trusting relationship. Having the ability to understand, recognize, and appreciate the way others feel is crucial to resolving a conflict, managing change, and making tough decisions at the same time putting yourself out there. Strive to negotiate a win for both parties by taking the other person's perspective into consideration. Get a clear understanding of what it would be like and what it would take for both of you to get a positive outcome. Even if you're just an intern, you're not just an intern, you are working there. Dynamic communication is important and very important to develop in your effective communication. It is important to understand that communication is what builds bridges and connects people in a powerful way. When you're able to get your point across in an objective manner, others are more likely to open up, see your perspective, and negotiate with you, appreciate you, give you a break, give you more opportunities. Communication is the key to influencing others and creating powerful teams, relationships, and joint forces to achieve successful outcomes. Especially when you are starting in your career, being interns, You've got to put it yourself out there. Now, are you willing to do all these? If you do this, you'd get along well with others, you'd work well with others, and you'd live well with others. Remember, communication works for those who work at it. If you have questions, please feel free to send me a message on my Facebook page, It's Time with Chari. I will try to reply to your message as soon as I can. Now, go and explore the power of effective communication.